to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ebro in the Morning. We're celebrating Juneteenth. We got the Juneteenth tunes going. Laura Stiles, Rosenberg. Uh, we celebrate uh, the freedom of black people from enslavement. We wanted to bring on our brother, uh, public advocate, Jumani Williams, to uh, continue the, the momentum today. Uh, Jumani, my first question. In your life, did you expect Juneteenth to get this much recognition and celebration in America? <laughs> well, peace and blessings, love and light on this Juneteenth. I, I think, man, e everything is, is, is looking a lot different right now. I I don't know. I just I just don't know the answer. I would love for it to, to be yes, but maybe not, man. But there's a lot of things happening right now that I think um, is is is, a, is, a, is hopefully a culture shift because you can't legislate cult, uh, morality. You can't let you legislate culture shift. That got to happen in a lot of different ways. And seeing NASCAR saying they're no longer gonna wave the uh, the Confederate flag was like, whoa, that, that's something different. If NASCAR is doing it, we might have an opportunity for America to really contend with itself in a way that it never really wants to. Uh, and the fact that Juneteenth is here and, uh, and people celebrate it in a way, Twitter and Best Buy all over uh, is is amazing. Target, did um, you see Target's black business uh, Instagram oh, post yesterday? Target went ah, ahead ah, with ah, the black ah. business Instagram post yesterday. Really? What? Uh, Target was I, like, I, yo, let me pull up Target. Target went off yesterday. But what's gonna happen on all of this is like we've moved past the people in the streets is what I'm what I'm worried about. Um, that it's not just a moment in time, and that we really stretch it out to change um, the structural inequities. That's that's the problem. Do you imagine that what will happen, Jamani, is that um, the protest will be something that continues uh, and specifically continues after there's any sort of reminder of where we still are? So, like, it'll it'll come in waves depending on what's going on in the world. You know, we have a we have a way of having collective amnesia. So that's what I'm I'm really worried about, that collective amnesia that comes out. So we gotta take this energy and get as much as we can to get the change. Uh because, you know, we can't lose sight of the fact that we had just come off a global pandemic and the effect that that's had on people's minds and the effect it's had on uh people seeing communities disproportionately affected by COVID or social distancing policing and all that stuff that, that comes with being in your house for two, three months. Uh, I don't know that that's going to happen again. And so that right. all this other stuff piled on top of that. Um, and so we, you know, I hope that the only reason we're here is because people was making the streets hot. There's just no way around that. People can say whatever they want. Uh, but the people making the streets hot is why we see legislatures and, and we see the city and we see the state um, pushing forth bills that frankly have been around for, for years. That's right. Uh, the, re yeah. the reason these bills were ready to go is because We've been trying to push them for for God knows how long, and, and they were bottling it. And 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 the people, um, just so we don't have the collective amnesia you spoke of, uh, the people who were in the way of progress before uh, were whom that are still there today. Man, the governor was in the way of progress. Oh, Cuomo! You mean everybody's favorite guy? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, he Juneteenth police reform. True, <laughs> man of the people. Jumani, you've been you've been there from the beginning, right? Like, how do, what is the conversation when you see all of a sudden Cuomo being the one like, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to pass all these bills because I feel it's the right thing to do? Cuomo, and, and I don't, he's a, a brilliant um, bureaucrat. He's a brilliant strategist. And so this is what he does. Uh, and he, to be honest, he's right now running rings around the mayor who's not even saying, let me use this moment to move things forward. Like it's a it's it's just a, it's tough it's tough to watch. And, and but they're both by the way giving low hanging fruit. Right. I will give the governor some credit now. He's adopting some of the language that people have been saying is how do we move forward uh on reimagining public safety, which is the real question that we have to get at. We gotta, you know, policing focus on that, I understand. But the real question is what does public safety look like in these communities and how do we deal with the social inequities? That's a question that looks like He's beginning to push, so I have to give him some some credit for that. I hate to give credit for people who are impediments, but the question is, how far does that go when the heat's off? Because he said, "We've already run. You won. There's no need to protest." That also came out of his mouth. Um, so that's tough. I, you know, I want to give some credit to uh, Corey Johnson, who is the speaker. There are some things that we need to do, but 
one thing I like that he did is he came forward and said, um, I am sorry for not moving these bills forward. This was something we should have done. The apology. I didn't do it. Yeah. The governor and the mayor refused. They still stay in defensive stance, which makes it hard to move forward. You know, we all saw what happened. Look, look, my bad. Let's let's move forward and see what well, we can do Well, and even with now. COVID, right? Even with COVID, no, no scientists, no one knew what that was going to be. And mistakes were made. And it, yeah. and and I don't believe that politicians do a great job acknowledging we got hit with something we never seen before. We weren't prepared. We apologize. A lot of it, I think, honestly, has to do with uh, uh, lawsuits and them staying away from lawsuits because some of their um, uh, 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 lackluster response, to to say the least, led to people dying. But for a nation to heal. Right, you're gonna have to acknowledge where the mistakes are made so that they're not made again or looked over. Truth and reconciliation. That, that's right. That's what we need. You gotta have honest conversation. But I don't want to let them off the hook just for not having seen it before. The data that we had was at the time that we got it. Everybody messed up the beginning, but by the time we started figuring out, they still made very bad decisions that caused people to die needlessly. I believe the governor and the mayor based on information we had at that time, made very bad decisions. And I want, I want to be clear about that. What do you, Jamani, what do you get when you watch the, um, I don't know if you watch the extended video, but when you watch the Rayshard Brooks killing in, in Atlanta, um, besides the absolute tragedy of it, what are the thoughts that you take away in terms of reform and what needs to happen? No, I haven't watched any of these videos. Ahmaud uh, Aubrey, um, George Floyd, Rashad Taylor, it's, it's, I realize it's very traumatic for me and uh, I just I just can't watch anymore. Like by the time you try to watch one, the next one's there, mm. and to see these people getting killed over and over, it's it's tough. So I see stills, I read about what happened, uh, but I haven't been able to watch the, them. It's just, it's was, just tough to watch. The Ray Shard video, um, I you know there is it's first of all understand it's forty minutes. The yeah. whole video is forty minutes. Most of the video is the interaction between the cop and Ray Shard. Mm. I encourage you to watch it for learning because you it's not like the uh, uh, um, Ahmaud Arbery where there's um, the murder is clear and it's very disgusting and it's jarring. The, the Ray Shard thing is sad because of the police interaction with the man over the course of 40 minutes and the mm. multiple instances that it didn't have to end the way it ended. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. you're not I just you're not just watching it. something like the George Floyd where it's literally you're watching someone die. The the yeah. Ray Shard uh Brooks one is you're literally watching the failure of what is the police state. It's uh so I I've, I've seen clips. I didn't realize it was 40 minutes long. I see a couple clips and then I turn it off. I know there was a discussion that happened beforehand. Uh, I didn't realize it was 40 minutes. Uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll try to check it out. But, the, the, you know, the answer even to the question, one is pol th we have to keep remembering policing is one part of this, right? And and we have to bring it back to um, what does public safety look like? So, yes, we do have racist cops. But I always remind people, you don't have to be racist to continue a racist, uh, bigoted institution or system. Mm. You might be, right? You never take that off the table. But you don't have to be for it to continue to move forward. And frankly, we send police in our in our in our society to do everything. everything too many, too many things. Right. Too many things. And so we have to reimagine what that looks like. And the same issues that we have with the police department, those very same issues exist in the Department of Education and the Department of Housing, uh, in the, the, the departments across the nation that deal with employment. I deal with making sure there's healthy food, uh, so you get in the job so you can get healthy food on the table. All of those things are st structural inequities. And if you don't deal with those things, we're going to miss a very important opportunity because not dealing with those things is what creates this um, public safety imbalance between communities. And one community has it, the other doesn't. And you send police to try to solve all those problems. And they simply don't have the tools. It's actually it's unfair to the police officer and it's unfair to the community that, that they're trying to serve, especially those that come really saying, Yo, I want to help and be 
a, a, a good thing to these communities. It's not fair to them either. Um, Jumani, um, are you um, are you happy with the progress that's made been made on police reform with the NYPD so far? You know, black community, black and brown, but black community in particular, always have to answer the question of, um, uh, is it good enough? Or are you satisfied? Like, the, the, the short answer is no, right? But I'm, I'm glad something's happening. But this stuff should have happened years ago by the very same people who are now talking like they they brand new. We Oh, look at what we're doing. Like, no, you were the problem of why this stuff wasn't happening. If this stuff was done years ago, we wouldn't be here now. We'd be so much further in this discussion well, the, at a time. When well, we're the re- and the reason I ask is because you also, you know, and we've also talked about the fact that the people are now paying attention and now in the streets is forcing these people who are politicians who were not brave enough to go against the police unions. Mm-hmm. They were not brave enough to go against, um, you know, the bad press and the attacks they would have gotten from the very vocal, uh, you know, heavily financed individuals who want this stuff to continue. So now that you got people protesting in the street and really turning the heat up, now these politicians feel emboldened. Um, I mean, I, I'm with you. I'm not satisfied, but I'm also happy to see the people realize their power absolutely and I, again i'm even i'm glad that this stuff is moving right but a lot of it is low-hanging fruit i want to be clear about that if we only come away with saying you shouldn't choke somebody to death and we move 50a so we should see disciplinary records and we move the billion dollars from the police department i'm going to tell you that sounds like a lot but that's low-hanging fruit mm-hmm. there are structural changes that have to happen or else we're going to be right here Again, as, as we wrap, as we wrap for for NYPD specifically, what are when you talk about structural changes? Obviously, getting the NYPD out of schools. I've heard comp stat is a big issue as well to the culture. What other structural changes do you believe we should be paying attention to? Here, I just locally? want to remind folks: Minnesota, the police department had many of the forms that we were talking about before George Floyd died. Mm-hmm. I just want to just want to put that out there. So. The reforms itself is not it. We have to rethink public safety. We have to rethink uh, policing. So one, I mean, there are a lot of things that need to be changed. The police, the, uh, the police commissioner shouldn't be the arbiter of every decision that's going to be made, right? So there's, there's things that we could change it. But frankly, Comstat, which has been used uh, to uh, as abusive as quota systems and judging police simply on what that happens to that number, making them think that they're the only ones responsible for that number. What happens if every agency was looking at cops that? If everybody, every com- uh, community organization, everybody was saying, oh, there's a problem here. Let's all go and fix it. What happens now is, is that cops that there's a problem here. Police, you go and fix it. And the more we can begin to rethink that in a very real way is, is the real, that's the Stop real Stop allowing the police to fix themselves. We need to, we need to, we need to step in yeah. and remove that from them. They got to stop police policing and overseeing themselves and they have to also be stopped from simply being the ones equated with public safety police can't do everything in society particularly uh if that happens in the black and brown community we know what's going to happen we see it all of the time and so we have to it's 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 we have to have the courage and the boldness to have that discussion but it's real that's the only thing that is going to fix what we're talking about right now what is public safety reimagining it why is it okay to cut every single summer youth program and think that's not going to have an effect, a uh, summer youth job, and think that's not going to have an effect on the young people? And then we're going to send police in to try to solve the problem. And lock, and lock more people up. Basically. They do these takedowns every so often, and I'm like, okay, police are for an acute problem, was in an acute situation. Okay, what now? Whatever you put in that community, how do we address the problem? Nothing. You're going to be back here in five years to do another takedown. So when does it take? When does that stop? When do we really figure out to get to the root of the problem, solve it, so that you don't have to send police all the time, even to solve the, the crimes that people are most worried about, which is the, the violent crimes and the gun violence. You know, the crisis management system, the cure violence, the violence interrupters. We've proven that those type of things work, but they don't have the funding that the police department has. 
Jumani Williams, we appreciate you today, man. Happy Juneteenth. Thanks, man. Peace and blessings. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, man. Thank you, Jumani. Peace, peace. By the way, my, my office is closed for Juneteenth. I'm sorry the mayor didn't do it. Again, the governor scooped him on it, and he still didn't even follow suit.